Welcome to this garage management system. It's a system designed to make the lives easier of garage owners all over the world. Most garages are mostly paper based. With records all written on paper, there is a high chance of losing data which could mean loss of money for the company. This garage management system can solve this issue. It is entirely automated, meaning there is little work for you. Instead of spending money to hire an accountant or bookkeeper, you could use this garage management system. So let's go through the system. Since there are multiple types of employees in a garage, for example, mechanic, receptionist, franchisee, or even admin, the login has to be flexible and redirect to the appropriate page. Let's log in as an administrator. The system was made so that the administrator can create and restore backups, as well as manage users that can use the system. This is visible here with the three buttons. The administrator account type cannot access any other page, for example adding a customer. If we click the button here to create a backup, a backup is created and the file name is named after the date today as well as the time, as shown. On the restore a backup page here, we can view all of the backups that have been created already and then select the backup that we would like to restore to. Once selected, the database will be restored to the state it was on that backup. Right, now let's create a user to log in with later. We will create a franchisee as they have the most access, therefore allowing me to show you most of the system. As seen here, we can choose a login, password role, as well as the salary, which is a rate per hour. And once created, we can now log in with the... So from the franchisee that we just created, we will now log in. Now that we are logged in as a franchisee, we can see all the functionality provided to the franchisee. The franchisee has access to these. So let's create a customer. We can view all customers on this page. From here, we can also search for a customer. This feature uses Ajax and searches as you type, saving you the time and effort to press the search button. From this page, we can also view customers, jobs, vehicles, and details. In order to add a customer, we have to enter their details. Some details are strictly required, such as first name, last name, and a method of contact. Only the franchisee can assign a discount to a customer as seen here using this dropdown. Once added, we can see it appear on the list of all customers. It will be added to the bottom of the list, so we might have to search for it. Here we can use the live search feature to look for the customer. As seen, whenever the user inputs a letter, the search script is triggered and the customer name is highlighted. From the customer list, we can also view the customer's vehicles, jobs and details. We can also edit the details here or delete the customer. Let's take a look at the vehicles. Vehicles can be added to a customer. Again, we can view a list of the vehicles, view their details, edit their details, as well as delete the vehicles. There is also still a live search for the vehicles. Parts can be found in the warehouse and these are used in jobs, more specifically in tasks. Each part has a price, stock level and threshold. The price is the price. Stock level is the current level of that part in stock and threshold is the level at which the user is alerted due to low stock. We can see again that there is a live search feature. For each part we can edit or delete it. We can also order more parts by clicking on the shopping cart and then choosing the amount that would be ordered. As well as viewing, editing or deleting parts, we can also view the order history. This is where we can view which user has ordered which part and when. We can also view a graph showing this data. This graph is very important because we can view a any large payments and then track why these payments were so large. Another feature that is important of the warehouse part of the garage management system is the selling stock to members of the public. Once clicked, the new customer's details have to be entered. Then the user can select which parts to be ordered as well as their con quantities. Once the user is happy with their order, they can click checkout and this will create an invoice for all the parts that they have ordered. This invoice can be printed as well in order to be sent to the customer. There are two types of jobs that can be created, standard and custom. Standard jobs are created before the job is even recorded. It's a template job that is used to record jobs that are generic. 
whilst custom jobs are jobs that are recorded when a customer requires it. Let's create a standard job. First, we set the details of the job, such as the job name, type, and estimated hours. Then we can add tasks as necessary. Tasks require a task title. By default, the estimated task hours will be one hour. A task can be with or without a spare part. Now, let's create an actual job that is recorded. First, we select the job type. Here, we can also see any standard jobs that have been created before. We then select a customer, followed by their vehicle, the current garage location, the work required, such as change all wheels, the estimated hours, the mechanic, and finally, the option to pay later. Once the job is created, we can see it at the bottom of the list. We can view the job and see the various details, such as the customer contact details, current status of the job, and various other information. If the job is in progress, we can edit it. This will bring us to this screen. Now, we can add tasks to the job, such as change front wheels, and we will select the part called wheel, and select two of them, and finally the duration. We can leave the duration blank, and by default it will be set to one hour. Once the task is added, we can see it appear here. We can edit this task, delete it, or complete it. The current staff logged in who completes the task will be the staff member to appear as the person who completed that task. Once all tasks are completed, the job can be set to completed. If a task is in progress and the user attempts to complete the job, an error message will pop up as shown here. Another part of the system are discounts. Discounts can be of three types, fixed, flexible or variable. Fixed discounts are assigned just one value a percentage that is discounted off the final price. A flexible discount contains price bands. These range from a minimum to a maximum and contain the percentage discounted off the final price within the range of the minimum and maximum. A variable discount is a discount that has multiple percentage values per job type. So, for example, we could have 5% for MOT. This means that the customer with their discount assigned to this one will get 5% of their final cost if the job was an MOT one. The final part of the system that we will cover are the notifications. There are two parts to the notifications. First, we have the stock level alert. When a part's stock level reaches below the threshold, then an alert will pop here showing how much of the stock is left, and the link can be clicked to be directed to the order page. The second part to this notification are the late payment alerts. Once a job is complete and an invoice is generated, if the invoice has not been paid for a while, a notification will pop up letting the user know that the customer is overdue as seen here.